Hello, I'm Jason with CodeLearner.com. In this lesson of Mastering Java, we're going to talk about objects and classes, and we'll be taking an introduction here. The most important thing before we start really doing object-oriented programming uh, in any language is to make sure you understand what a class is and what an object is and what the relationship is between them. If you don't understand that, then you're not going to understand any of the code and any of the examples. But the good news is it's very, very easy to understand these concepts. So what we're going to do is go through just a couple of quick slides to give you a really rock-solid mental image of what a class is and what an object is. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So the first thing is, what is a class? I want you to remember this uh, in the following way. A class is a template. All right, think about that. Think of what a template is in your mind. A template is kind of an, a logically or, organized listing of characteristics of something. When you think of a template, you think of kind of like the master copy, and everything else is kind of dependent upon what the template lays out. So you can think of the template for uh, uh, writing a document or a template for making a movie or a template for writing a book. It's organizing uh, a, a listing of logical characteristics that all of the uh, actual objects that you're created they have to follow the template. That's what a template is. So anytime you read a book on Java and it says a class, talking about this is a class, that's a class, this is a class, whatever, you need to replace this word with the word template. It's a really good descriptive word. Okay, a class defines the form of an object. That's all I'm basically doing is restating the first bullet. It's a template that defines the form of an object, just like we just discussed a minute ago. And here's the kicker. An object is a specific instance of a class. It's a specific instance of a class. So it's just the same uh, 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 you know, relationship that you might have already guessed. When you have a template, you define what something's supposed to look like. And then if you want to make copies or different types of objects, then you would just follow the template. Your different objects over here can look a little bit different, but they all have to to kind of follow the same logical format of the template. So when we create an object in Java or any programming language, we're basically using the template to create a new uh, object with similar characteristics that's all spelled out in the template. So let me give you a rock solid example. You know, talking about bullet points is nice, but an example really can get the point home. So let's give an example of a class and an object. Again, a class is the template and an object is what you create from the template. All right, following the template. So here's the best class that anyone can probably come up with. Here's a class of something we're going to call a vehicle. You guys know what vehicles are. Those are the things you drive on roads. Some of them are big, some of them are small, some of them are fast, some of them are slow, some of them are 18 wheelers. But anyway, they're all vehicles. So they share in common a kind of a function that we call vehicle. That's something with four wheels that we drive down the road, right? Now there are many characteristics of a vehicle that you could write down. I've only written four here. Certainly we could say that all vehicles have some length, all vehicles have some passenger capacity, I can carry five people or four people or ten people or whatever. All vehicles have some top speed that you could look up in a book or on the web. All vehicles have a color. And I just stopped here, but there's many, many things you could define. You could say, uh, what is the fuel efficiency of a car? What is the you know price of a car? What is the uh, uh, maintenance cost of a car, I mean, of, of vehicles? And so all of the things that you would list inside of your class definition is basically general characteristics of what the class is trying to describe. That's what a class is. It's defining this template here. This class that we're calling vehicle has to have all these characteristics or whatever I decide to put in here. All right. And that's the template that I will then use to create objects which may have slightly different values for all of these things. So for instance, I may create an object. Notice I'm not saying it's a class anymore. I'm saying it's an object and I'm going to call this object a Corvette. Now a Corvette is a very specific instance of a vehicle. We all know what a Corvette looks like. Really fast sports car, right? We know that the length is a certain specific number. We know that the passenger capacity for this particular Corvette is a certain specific number. Um, we know that the top speed for this particular Corvette is a certain specific number. We know the color of this specific Corvette is a certain specific color. And if I had other characteristics in, in my template or my class, then I would have to have them listed when I create the object. Maybe I have fuel efficiency, maybe I have cost, maybe I have maintenance cost, maybe I have uh, who knows, the size of the tires. Anyway, whatever you define in your class, which is a template, must be reflected when you create the object because the object comes from the class. The object is created from the template called the class. 
Now let's look at another object. This one's called Object Minivan. So here's a minivan. It has a length that's 19 feet. It has a much higher passenger capacity. It has a much lower top speed. And it has this particular object, um, the one that I'm thinking of in my mind, has a certain color. But again, if I had other characteristics in my class, I would have to have them defined for this object. So now you can kind of sort of start to see why object-oriented programming is useful. Let's say I was writing a program that was dealing with cars. Maybe it's going to be a database of cars or a website or something that has a lot of car information. It would be kind of a pain to create, you know, a bunch of data structures for this car and a bunch of data, you know, data structure for this car and so on individually all the time. I mean, when these things are so similar to one another, it makes more sense to define one central template that defines what the ob what the class is going to look like and then from that I can create an object that we name Corvette and then I can create another object that we name minivan I might create a third object called pickup truck and a fourth object called uh, you know Mazda 626 and another one that's called you know something else so I can have as many objects as I want in my program all created from the main template that's called a class that's the major relationship between the two that I'm trying to drill in here. So again, classes define the template. Objects are specific instances of the template. That's what you need to know. All right, that's the most important thing here. Now, classes in this particular example up here, we've defined values. You know, we said this class contained, it's basically a bunch of numbers, length, passengers, top speed. I guess this isn't really a number, but it's a, it's a characteristic. It's, it's a data value. So far, I've defined this class and I've said these are just data values. But in fact, Classes can also contain methods. Now, you, should, you know now why I introduced methods before. You should remember a method is something that we usually use to calculate um, something in, in Java or perform a function in Java. But methods uh, in the previous discussion that we've done have all been kind of these isolated things. But here we can add methods and they can also be members of the class. So we can have, for instance, um, this class template for vehicle we can have this data but we can also put a method in here that would be part of this class uh, depending on what we're trying to do um, in general when we create a class method like that the purpose of them is to operate on the class variables and classes should be organized with logical groupings of variables and methods what I mean by this class methods usually operate on class variables is here I have some information for the Corvette, you know, the length, passenger capacity, top speed, I could put fuel efficiency, whatever. I could create a method here that would be part of this class definition. Maybe the, the purpose of this method is to calculate how long it takes this vehicle to go one mile. I could create a method, now that would be an actual calculation. I, I, I would calculate based on the top speed that I also have as defined as part of the class, how long it would take to go one mile. Because if I know how fast it can go and I know the one mile, I can certainly calculate how long it would take. So I could put that in a method inside the class that would always be available if I ever needed to calculate how long it took a Corvette to go a mile. It would always be in the, in the definition in case I always wanted to figure out how long it would take uh, a minivan to go a mile. So I can define methods down here as part of the class that can operate on these variables uh, there. So when you talk about the idea of a class, you need to be thinking of variables that you can define as part of the class, right? And also methods that you can define that may operate on that information as part of the class. All right, so there's a couple of other definitions. Uh, they're kind of random, but I just want to point them out because you might read them in, in a book if you're reading a book on Java. When you look at the word instance, I've actually used it a couple of times as well. It's just talking about the idea of creating an object. See, when you talk about the class, no, nothing is really created with the class. The class is just the template. It's just the form of things. When you create an instance of an object, you're actually creating a copy, reserving memory, creating an object, and you say that's a specific instance that follows the logical organization of the class. So when you see instance, you need to think about something that's been created. When you see the word member or class member, it just means the variables or the methods that are part of the class. So up here, whenever I had this uh, slide up above, these variables up here, these are class members. If I had a method down here that were the, whose purpose was to operate on these guys like we were talking about, that would be a class member as well. So it's just whatever is a member of the class. Uh, and also you might see something called instance variable. These are just the variables that are a part of the class definition as well. So basically 
these same ones here, you might see these variables that are part of the class. You might see them listed as instance variables. Um, these are just a couple of different things you probably run into in a book. The most important thing is when you see the, the idea of instance, it's when something's created. A member is when, uh, when you're looking at what, you know, what consists, what does the class consist of? It consists of members, usually variables or methods. All right, so when we define a class, I'm not going to write code here, but I'm just going to give you a general idea. When you define a class, you use the class keyword and you have to give it a name. And you have an opening curly brace, right? And inside of this class definition here, you declare your instance variables. These would be things like top speed, you know, color, uh, whatever we were talking about in, in the previous slide when it comes to the characteristics of the vehicle. That, that would be defined up here. And you would also declare maybe a method here that would operate on these variables. And you could create another method that would operate on these variables. You can have as many methods or variables that you want inside the class definition. And then you have a closing curly brace like this. So when you define a class, you use the class keyword, class name, de declare your variables, declare your methods. Uh, and that's really all I want to share with you in this particular um, lesson. It's so important. Uh, if there's one thing, just one thing that I wanted you to um, take away from this is that the class defines a template. Objects are specific instances of the template. You know, when you create and reserve something in memory of this form, that is called an object. So now as you read Java books or learn about it more or listen to me talk about it in the next lesson, um, you'll know what these things are. So what we're going to do is go on to the next lesson where we'll write some code, create an object, uh, and create a class that, of course, we're going to use to create the objects. And then as we uh, inch our way through our learning of Java, we're going to kind of take it step by step to make sure nobody gets lost. And um, we're going to create classes. We're going to create objects. We're going to use methods to operate on the, on the data in a class. And you'll find out that it's not very hard to understand what's going on, but we are going to take it step by step to make sure everybody uh, gets it. So follow me on to the next lesson where we will define our first class in Java.